so welcome everyone to the Training Grounds, uh, which is a series um, of short interviews with industry professionals who will be providing an insight into employability support and strategies, especially during this current pandemic. We are really excited today to um, kick off our series with Mark Hunter, MBE, um, also gold, silver medalist, um, Olympian uh, from the Beijing Olympics um, and before as well. Um, so Mark, look, it's a pleasure to have you on, on, the, on the series today as a, to kick us off. Um, could you just give us a little bit of an insight into your journey, um, especially as an, as an Olympian? Yeah, well, I obviously come from the east end of London. Uh, so yeah, once again, thanks for having me on today. It's a pleasure to join you on the first, the first of the, se the series. Um, coming from the east end of London, uh, grew up in East Ham, uh, obviously a huge West Ham fan as a kid. Uh, and sport yeah. was a very thing close to my heart very early on. I dreamt of playing for West Ham, realised that uh, I wasn't quite good enough in football, uh, or maybe too good, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, then I, I was quite fortunate enough to find another sport, which was rowing, which I had a, you know, a, a natural ability for, I guess, um, um, a skill, a, a, a feeling of being on the water and what it was like to move a boat. Uh, doesn't mean you're going to be good at it, but I, I had something... And then I watched the Olympic Games and got inspired by what I saw and then wanted to go on to be an Olympian. So it took 16 years to go from being a 14-year-old wow. to stand on the Olympic podium uh, with a gold medal. So it was a long journey, but uh, something that was rewarding, heartbreaking, emotional, yeah. roller coaster, all the sort of things that, you know, go with, you know, being a, a human being, basically, you know, your highs and lows. So yeah. um, I was fortunate enough to cap it off by winning gold. Um, and then having a year off, going to work in America as a coach. I went out there to coach at UCLA, so I had a lot of fun in the States. Brilliant. And then I came back into being an athlete, came out of retirement to start training for London. Um, obviously, being a home games, which was a true home Olympics for me because yeah. I grew up in that area. Um, you know, I used to go to the Hackney Speedway as a kid. So I went to school in Bow. So it was a true home Olympics for me. It wasn't just because it was in the UK or London. It yeah. was in my back garden as a kid so it was really special and then obviously unfortunately we came second there so it was a silver um, and then I officially retired and then went into the working world which is a challenge for anyone um, yeah. especially when your identity is wrapped up as an athlete yeah um, and then trying to work out how do you fit into society doing a different role uh, how will you be acknowledged um, how will yeah. people support you um, and there were some fundamental things I think we're going to touch on today that um, really were quite fundamental in helping me make that transition across um, because it was a challenging challenging transition for, for any athlete or any person going from one environment to another. Of course. Um, and, you know, it's quite interesting you, you say that because even myself, even though it was a little bit earlier in my, my career, if you like, um, I was on the path of actually looking to become a doctor. But... I just loved football, loved sport. Um, so the kindred spirits almost in terms of that, you know, that passion for sport. Um, and, you know, I thought actually I'm, I, I want to go into football, you know, it's something I really desire. Um, and so I was, made that change myself at about 20, 21. Um, but obviously in terms of your career change, that was later on, obviously after a long-term career as an, as an athlete. Um, what would you say were some of the key things you thought about before you actually made that transition and after your retirement? Well, I, I look, I had two transitions. So I obviously retired after we won in Beijing yeah. and then went um, to coach in California. And about six months before the Olympic Games, I started to think about what do I want to do when I stop? And this is a thing that, you know, I gave myself time to prepare because, you know, as an athlete, you prepare for a long time for something. You don't just, yeah. it doesn't just happen overnight. And I thought the dedication needed to be obviously not years and years, but I need to have some sort of plan of how I was going to kind of move on because, you know, we are, well, I, I'm a goal driven person and yeah. I needed something beyond the goal I had at the Olympic Games. Otherwise, you come to a standstill and work out oh, what do I do now. Um, so I wanted to coach in America. I'd had a road trip with friends about four years ago that Brilliant. I really loved. Um, Where did you go? Well, uh, so we, my friend was studying at Cal Berkeley at the time. So we flew into San Francisco and yeah. we drove down Route 1. Uh, oh, okay. me, and, me and four friends, boys road trip, did three weeks. 
It was probably one of the best holidays I've ever. It was amazing. It was so much fun. Route sixty six? Did you go? No, no we, we didn't do sixty six. No, no, we, oh, just, okay. we stayed on the coast. We just stayed right. in the sunshine. I only want to be in California. <laughs> that's it. California. That's it. Um, and then I remember being out there, and I was like, I have to try and come and work out here. I want to live the. I, I don't want this to be a holiday destination. I want this to be where I live and work. Yeah. And just see what it's like. Um, so six months before Be Beijing, the Olympic Games, I started reaching out, um, going online, uh, looking at different websites of coaching roles. But it's yeah. very tough because normally those roles are up on, you know, they go on different um, platforms. Um, yeah, and yeah. most of the time they're already taken. They're already taken. But it's about reaching out to people, meeting people, having that personal contact where yeah. someone will recommend you or you know, be that sounding board to help you. So I don't want to say a mentor, but just someone just to feed off was really important. Yeah. Um, and I met a lady uh, during the Henry Gatta, she came over. So it was a, a couple months later and I gave her athletes a tour around my rowing club at Leander and Henley. And she said, I've heard you're trying to get a job in America. And I was like, yeah, I'm not having much luck, but I'm persevering and I'm going to keep trying. And then without me realizing, she sent a letter of recommendation to three universities on the West Coast. And yeah. I got three job applications through within a couple of weeks. I had no idea there were jobs wow. available. So it's actually sometimes, you know, reaching out to organizations saying, do you have any opportunities? Because they don't always post them. Well, they might have some that are going to come up soon. Yeah. Um, you know, and getting in the door first is really important. And then I had some online actual interviews because I couldn't fly out to America to do the interviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I interviewed with How Stan. did that go? It was really, yeah, it was, you know, kind of when we think about what we're doing now, like this was 12 years ago. I was doing it on Skype, yeah. you know, interviewing. Um, and it was a really interesting process because, you know, I, I interviewed with Stanford and UCLA and a, a university called LMU. Mm -hmm. And I was offered the job at Stanford. Um, and also UCLA. But I remember the UCLA one was obviously based in LA. Um, it would be a complete different change from what I'd been doing as an athlete. I'd yeah. be coaching, but lifestyle would be very different. And I remember like doing my research, and I, I, I picked up on that, obviously, John Wooden, a basketball coach in America, college sport, was yeah. a huge, iconic figure. And he was UC UCLA. That was his yeah, background. Yeah. He'd won numerous titles. And I used one of his quotes during my interview. And apparently that was the deciding factor. As soon as I said that quote, wow. that was a thing. Because I, I wasn't an Olympic champion at that point. I hadn't won yeah. Olympics. My Olympic record was I came last in Athens. I hadn't won any big medals. Yeah. And it was just that bit of research and insight was really valuable. Um, and obviously it was a thing that, you know, got, got me the role. So um, it was quite humbling to know that that research had been useful because sometimes you're never sure whether the kind of background stuff that you do actually does yeah. impact or influence, but in most cases it does. And and that's brilliant. And, and if, if anyone wants a top tip, you know, um, straight off the back, sort of that, that research element, as you said, really going into the detail of, you know, just having a quote could make all of the difference, um, which I think definitely is key. I just want to go back just slightly because, um, you know, you mentioned how it was even challenging for you um, to be able to, navigate that that career change you know someone who's you know is an is a olympic athlete you know you would think that it would you know be quite straightforward um but it's it's quite important especially for those who will be listening into the um um watching the video and listening to the, the podcast in relation to um navigating that career change for you know within this current climate where actually you might not be able to meet people it might be really challenging that's quite encouraging, I think. Um, and how would you uh, tell someone to try and navigate that where they can't maybe meet people face to face like you would before the pandemic? Yeah, I think we've been thrust in or forced upon to use uh, programs like Teams or Zoom, more FaceTime. And I think just being you know, flexible and adapting to the yeah. situation, that's something that we have to do. If you're not willing to adapt and be flexible, unfortunately you will get left behind that's what's going to happen so it's, it's about you know you may have a you know people do like face-to-face -face time you know being in contact reading body language yeah you know, feeding off people is something that i love doing and this new way of doing things is something that we have to adapt to and and, and really come to terms with very quickly 
because you don't want to lose out on any potential opportunities. And yeah. also, I think it will demonstrate your kind of intent to move with the times yeah. by being flexible with this sort of kind of interviewing or meeting people. Um, and I think, yeah, it's just, I think it will show your character as well. You know, are you willing to maybe do something outside the box that you wouldn't have done before? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Brilliant. And, you know, I, when I looked at your website and talked, one of the things that you talked about was sacrifice. And I think sort of just linking in, you know, that flexibility is, is going to take a bit of a sacrifice where you might have to learn a new skill. Um, you know, during this time at home, it might be a IT skill, for example, you know, while everyone's on yeah. Teams, Zoom, etc., making sure that you're aware of how to utilize it, because that might be, you know, if you're having job interviews, it could be the next few that are actually, um, you know, over these platforms, for example. And I, I think what you just touched on there, learning stuff online when you have this time. I think yeah. you know, there's a lot of talk about a skill, uh, skills-led recovery um, yeah. because, you know, we are going into a really challenging time. There's, I think it's like 9 million people on furlough at the moment. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the consequences of what's happened over the last few months, you know, economically, we don't really know what that is until probably in a couple of months' time when hopefully not, but there may be more people, you know, maybe yeah. unemployed and that sort of thing. So the, the focus is going to be on this skill le skills-led recovery, which I think is really important. Yeah. And for young people especially, I, I think it's a great opportunity. You know, you've got a chance to learn a new skill, um, yeah. be supported, and, you know, ask questions. Like, don't just sit there and be dictated to. Ask questions. Reach out to people. Yeah, It's very rare that people say, I, haven't got, I don't want to talk to you. They might not be able to talk to you at that moment in time, but if you keep asking, normally they will find some time to speak with you. Um, and I think that's really important. Don't, don't be, don't be scared. Yeah. You know, old, um, you know, learn new things because I do think, you know, the world we live in is changing and will continue to change. And, you know, what it looks like beyond the current yeah. situation we're in, no one really knows, but this skills led recovery thing is massive. that has been spoken about at the moment. Brilliant. Um, in terms of, obviously you had a, um, uh, some experience within the city, um, after you retired, what was that um, uh, change like for you? That that was a change that I wanted. I wanted to yeah. go from I just went from one extreme, being an athlete, to the other extreme, working as a, a as a program um, project manager uh, for a, a company in the city, and going from being an athlete training three times a day, yeah, um, to work in office where I'm sitting behind a screen and um, you know running projects and that sort of thing. It, it was interesting. Um, the one thing I would always say is that when you're going to transition or move across is to find a buddy or a mentor to help you. And I think that's yeah. a really important thing. And it, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, what background you have, whatever. I think yeah. to have somebody to bounce ideas off and yeah. to learn from, share you know, some of the, the issues or problems that you, you, know, you see or you're worried about, I think is and it's an external voice. It's not someone in your close knit group of friends or family. Yeah. yeah. Just to give you a different perspective, I think is really important. And that's something I wish I'd done then. I do have a mentor now that I work with, you know, yeah. and I think that's really important. That just helps you kind of feed off them and learn from them as well. Um, so that's something I would advise young people to do is, you know, to find a mentor to work with if you are going to transition into something else. Brilliant. And that would be a, a, any age, really. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, any I, I think a mentor is, is such a – people, you, you know, I used to look at it as, oh, what, why would I want a mentor? I don't want to let someone in to know what I'm thinking <laughs> and blah, blah, yeah. blah. And I don't, yeah. But I think it's just a way of you developing and evolving as a human being. Um, yeah. And that different perspective is sometimes things that you wouldn't even thought about that they just naturally do. Or it's it's a sounding board where you know you might have a complex situation which you can't get your head around where they just yeah. give you one thing and oh yeah that's really simple and it's it's, it's and it works both ways as well I think it's that kind yeah. of dynamic and that relationship is really important and and just in terms of your mentorship um, would you say for anyone who's you know looking for a mentor to support them with a career change. Would you say that they were, the mentor would have to work in that uh, industry that they're interested in? Do you think that's of benefit? No, no, not at all. And I think sometimes it's better if they don't work in that industry. 
you know, because okay, it, interesting. It, you know, if if you're if you want a specific mentor for a specific environment you're going into or sector, yeah. totally, there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes a different perspective from someone external can just think of different things that someone that's locked in that world sometimes can't see. Yeah, you know, because they can't step back. And the thing is, it, there's no right or wrong, really, is it? It's, it's whatever fits for you and, you know, depending yeah. on what environment you're going to go into. But I've always looked for someone external with not involved what I'm doing so they can actually be that step back and look at it from, yeah. a, from a different lens other than what I'm looking at from. But there's no right or wrong with that. You're correct. Okay. Be from any. Brilliant. Um, and one of the things that, um, I mean, there's statistics out there that talk about the um, how long an average person spends within a career now, which are within a, a certain employer now, um, and especially between the sort of the 25 to 34 years of age, um, it drops to about 3.2 years. Before that, it's about 4.6 years. Um, do you think nowadays, uh, you would you say that people have maybe two, three, four different careers, or if you like, or work in different sectors over their maybe 25, 30 year uh, professional career? Yeah, I think it's more common now for people to move and try different things. And I think people are more about, you know, what is the purpose of what I'm doing? You know, what is yeah. the mission we're on? And also, what's in this for me? And I think that's a big thing now where, you know, when I think about, you know, my parents, they worked so hard. They did the same jobs for a long time, blah, blah, blah. But yeah. people, in, in, in the way that we work now, people don't really do that anymore. That They move around, try different things. Yeah. And you know that that you know that that's quite a bold thing to do um but i think you know we're all searching for that ideal job that's going to give us satisfaction work life balance and all these yeah, other things yeah. we talk about you know and look after our mental health and well-being um and sometimes it takes time to find that you know sometimes you might not find all those things um but it's like buying a house isn't it you never get everything you want or you buy yeah, a car yeah, or whatever yeah. it is you'll have to <laughs> you'll have to give up on some things. You can't get everything you, you, you desire, but I yeah. think it just takes time. And yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with people changing uh, sectors or careers um, because it's about you and being happy and enjoying what you're doing. And it, most people, I think, I think it's around 70% don't actually enjoy the job they do, which to me was a horrific stat I found online. So, um, wow. you know, to spend time working out what that is, you, know, yeah. you don't have to rush these things. And do you think that's almost the beauty or silver lining that actually you might not find everything within that um, job initially, but you almost there will be things that end up coming up down the line that you start to in, enjoy or you didn't see coming as part of the, the job? Yeah, I, I always think that yeah, if, you, if you're so fixed on something, then sometimes it's a real purpose, your drive to it. But not all of us know exactly what we want to do work-wise, do we? Like, yeah, yeah. You know, what is it that I want to do? And I always think about it. What is the ideal job for me? What would I love to be doing? And you've got so many different ideas. And, you know, how do I actually get them into context so I can actually find the right role? And yeah. does it exist? Does it exist? That's what I'm <laughs> um, So I think, yeah, just that flexibility, once again, coming back to being able to adapt, evolve, and kind yeah. of learn. And, and then you'll navigate. But it, I think it is more nowadays it's about people wanting that purpose and what's what's in it for me and i think that's a really important thing to remember yeah brilliant um and you mentioned about mental mental health um obviously a key thing in terms of that 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 transition can take a bit of time um and i know you you touched on it earlier on how um you were challenged in relation to like how do i start breaking into these different areas what would you say are some of the key things to for people to support themselves personally in terms of their um, mental health as they're going through that because it could take some time um you know especially in this current climate yeah and i, I think the, the time is a really important thing um but also the reasons for the change i think is another one you know yeah. are you in control of that was that your decision was that force upon you was it personal reasons was it health family location like there's so many things that can make this decision happen for you and how in control are you of those things? And I think, yeah, you know, it depends on your motivation as an individual. Um, and I think with the mental health side of that, really is it's, it's giving people the tools to understand what are the triggers for some things that can potentially happen. And the more awareness we can create, the more people will understand the things to 
be aware of because everybody has their own barometer of resilience and all these other things we talk about. Yeah. But it's what's right for them as an individual because mm-hmm. what I might find as really stressful, you may not. What yeah. I, might, I'm really, I might get quite anxious about, you probably won't. So it's yeah. understanding where your barometer is of your own mental well-being. And that that's takes good. time to understand that. Not everybody's the same. Um, and some changes will spark or ignite someone to be really motivated. I want to do this. I want to do something different. I'm going to prove people wrong. Yeah. Where others will go into a shell and think, oh, this is my self-confidence. Now I've been hit. My personal pride and all these sort of things. So I think it's just that the reasons for the change will really affect the mental health going forward into that. But it's understanding what is good for you and what is bad. And I think yeah. that, that that's what I'm kind of trying to get out there. Fantastic. Um, and, um, you know, you, you mentioned about being adaptable, especially and flexible, especially during these times. What would you say some of the other key transferable skills might be in addition to being adaptable, flexible um, for anyone looking to make a career change? Yeah, I think some of the, the things that you need to understand the environment that you want to go into, I think it's really important. That research element, again, understanding yeah. what you're looking for and what transferable skills you have would really enhance or support that. So could it be teamwork? You know, yeah. very rarely do you work on your own. You're going to work with a team in some manner, uh, whether it's re- you're reporting to someone, you're working amongst other colleagues. Um, you know, leadership is a big thing. You know, just because you're not the CEO or the boss or the director doesn't mean you can't be a leader in your environment. And I think everybody leads in different situations where, you know, they thrive. Um, I think you know, understanding your personal motivation, I think it's really yeah. important and being able to articulate that. Uh, communication skills are massive. If you can't communicate, it's very tough to yeah. interact with people, uh, seek feedback, uh, yeah. put your ideas forward. Um, I think, yeah, that's quite important. And I think another thing that we talked about skills-led recovery is, you know, understanding what areas of personal development you might need, you know, being mm-hmm. able to talk mm-hmm. about them, you know. You know, you understand your strengths, but what are the areas that I may not be so good at that I might need assistance with or to develop myself and i think that's that's a real sign of strength when so, if someone came to me and said these are the areas that i i need to improve i'm like wow they yeah. really understand themselves and that's really impressive brilliant and you know one of the things you mentioned especially um about communication you know, working in east london and obviously you as a um east london boy it, you know the, the community is so diverse in in east london so like you said in terms of communicating um not just internally with your um, you know the organisation which you which you work in, but also just understanding the community, the local community, or, or those who are the stakeholders. I think is um, is a key thing, and it's definitely at the heart of a lot of the work that we do at um, West Ham United Foundation, which I, I know you're aware of as well. Um, so I think that's a, a really strong point for um, people to really take take home with them. You know that communication um, and taking time to make sure that your your message is maybe being. Um, received as it as it should be and, and even that listening active listening as well probably as well I, th- I think understanding different cultures is so important and people get that so wrong like that yeah. is and it gets is you can't underestimate underestimate how important that is um because of people's beliefs backgrounds their view of the world their likes dislikes where they grew up yeah. their social economic background you've got to be really switched on and understand people and that cult, understanding their culture is so important because if you get that wrong if you engage with someone in the foot like if you meet someone or network you know they talk about the first seven seconds yeah, so yeah, yeah if you do something wrong or you bow or you try and shake hands or you go into cut whatever it is if you get that wrong that could be disastrous you only get a, you you only get ever get a chance to make one first impressions so that's really important um yeah and that's something I, I think more maybe more you know more learning needs to be about that because you know saying the right that you don't want to say the wrong thing yeah yeah no of course um and um you know what one thing that um i mean forbes have got an article uh, five ways to successfully navigate your career switch um and one of the top tips that they mention is around knowing your core values and I know you've mentioned about knowing knowing yourself, that self-awareness. Um, how important is knowing your core values? Because I, I see nowadays that 
um, probably more, uh, more people entering into the, you know, the, the, the employment market and um, those looking at career changes really want to know that the companies who they're going into share those values. Yeah, it's, it's something that I was quite cautious of when I came out in Africa. And I did a training course that actually I went on. And one of the first things we did was they wanted you to work out your core values. Oh, wow. um, so that they had a hundred, they had a hundred to start with. You had to put it down to twenty, then ten, and then, as you mentioned, you want five. Yeah, and it's it's a really important exercise. It takes a lot of time um, because you'll have your ideas straight away, but then when you start reading different values, actually that fits really well with me. Yeah, um, and I've, I still remember mine now. It was. You know, family was at the top of the list. Yeah. You know, uh, you know come from the East End, um, you know, something that I've always been quite passionate about is family and how close that is. Um, yeah. My passion, passion for something, you know, that, that gets me excited. Um, you know, it, that leads on to the kind of grit and determination. Um, yeah. You know, having a clear vision. What, what am I working towards? What are we trying to achieve is something that I need. <laughs> um, and then the, the kind of commitment is another big thing. You know, if I've got a clear goal that we're working to, I can really commit to something. Um, yeah. And then the motivation behind that. So that was that was my five. Um, and they may change over time, but that was that was the one that were kind of highlighted to me when I when I first did that exercise. So I think it's really important that people take the time to do that because you know it might come up in conversation, especially in an interview. There's something they might yeah. chuck in. And you don't want to be sitting there thinking about it. You want to be really positive with that messaging of why they're important to you, why they're your core values. Yeah, fantastic. And, you know, it's interesting you say that because even myself, I've, some of that I've, um, I've done that similar exercise before as well, actually. And just thinking off the top of my head, um, family was definitely one that came for me out of the five. Um, excellence, integrity, faith, and uh, empathy, I think. Mm. So, um, yeah. Again, yeah, like you said, it's something that you should be able, should be at the heart and forefront, um, you know, of your mind when you're, you know, when you're having an interview or what have you, or you're looking at, you know, the values um, of an organisation you might want to go into. Just leading off off of that, um, one of the things as well that was, uh, well, the last tip that was mentioned in this Forbes article was being all in. Um, I mean, what would that look like, and how important would you say that is for someone who wants to make that career change and is really either needs to or is really desperate to, doesn't enjoy the job. Um, how important would you say that is? Yeah, I think if you, you know, uh, this, when I think of being all in, I just think about being an athlete again, which is not the right context, I guess, but it just takes me all in and it comes, yeah. you know, you've got to take time to focus, you know, you know, and you've got to make sure things are in place. So have, you know, we talk about the work environment now, is your CV up to date or your resume, yeah. Um, you know, do you have a diary that, you know, how you're going to process things and your planning? Um, you know, I think a big thing as well is that, you know, we, we have an internal monologue in our mind. Like we've got an internal voice, haven't we, that's always going. Um, yeah. And do we write enough of that stuff down or do we just keep it in our brain? <laughs> you know, because we think we're saying it, but we're actually not. It's just internal. It's an internal dialogue we've got going on. Um, and then, you know, having that structure, I think, is really important um, because you need a process. And when it doesn't go right, you need to work out where it went wrong and how you redirect the way you want to go forward. Um, I, think, I think also you're, we're human beings. We have highs and lows, ups and downs. Um, you know, and there's nothing more challenging than what we've been through, the kind of roller coaster of emotions, uh, which, you know, I heard a great quote or a comment for that is called the Corona Coaster. Um, uh, that, that's quite important um, yeah. but I think it depends on the environment and it depends on your focus of what you want to get out of something and yeah. you know I talked about passion earlier but you know there's a great book called Grit by Angela Duckworth I don't know if you've read it I've, I've really heard of, yeah. Yeah, de definitely one that you know anyone wanting to change understand about grit is I think a, a kind of core value that I didn't know at the time that I would definitely put in my five now. Um, yeah. But it's something that is worthwhile looking at because it may support you in this be all in, you know, the way you kind of think about things and you, you respond to different situations. 
Brilliant. And that is a, a fantastic takeaway in terms of, you know, if, if, if you're um, like you talked about um, self-development, reading, I think, is definitely one of those ways. And that book, Grit, um, is, is definitely one I'm, myself. I need to put my Amazon uh, yeah. list well, to, to, to go. Well, there's so much, like you think about, like with the internet now, you can go on YouTube, there's TED Talks, there's yeah, just yeah. podcasts, there's, there's so much you can learn by just listening and observing. But then obviously it's putting that into action. You know, how do I use that to be all in basically? You know, how do I kind of elevate myself? How do I yeah. make myself accountable? Um, but there is so much stuff that people can kind of absorb information from, take snippets, you know, take all of it. What yeah. resonates with you as a human being and what can you use to express yourself? And I think that that's, that's something that we can all do by just observing, reading, and kind of continuously yeah. learning. Brilliant. And you know, Mark, it has been an absolute pleasure. Um, thank you so much for your time. Um, there is bucket, bucket loads of um, information, support, help that you've, um, you know, insight that you've given today for this, uh, this first in our series. And um, I really hope that those who are able to listen in will be able to take some of those snippets and will have an impact on, you know, helping them to navigate a career change um, now and in the future. No, I appreciate having me on and look, best of luck, everyone. Um, as we said, highs and lows. It's about discipline, staying with it um, and just, you know, back yourself. Always back yourself. Brilliant. Well, Mark, thank you once again and uh, enjoy the, uh, the rest of your day. Cheers, mate. Thank you very much.